In this video, we'll explore the library panel, which lets us bring in external resources like vector graphics, pictures, fonts, and color palettes. First, we'll look at the color palettes. We can click on the color palette to select it. These are being imported from colorhunt.co. And we can also right click to view more information about this palette. We can add it to the canvas by just left clicking on this add to canvas button and it brings it over. And we can also left click and drag a palette to bring it over to our document. We see this is simply just a group of objects and if we double click quickly to get into this group we can select each object individually. It's just a rectangle with a specific color. We can learn more about the color by going into the fill section and we can find information about this color. And we can also see information about this color in our elements panel as well. But notice there's nothing in our depths right now. Nothing is defined as far as colors go. We do have a section for colors and we've learned in the past we can add a color specifically down here manually, but we can also use the library to add color palettes to our Defs panel. To do that, we can just right click on the color palette and go add to Defs. What that'll do is add each of those four colors to our Defs panel, and we can add as many as we want, but now if we have different objects drawn here, we can quickly just left click and hold and drag that color over to use in our document and it's also going to be defined in our Defs panel as well. We can search for specific color palettes by using the search bar at the bottom down here. We can either type in like red, we can start typing in green, and then we'll see color palettes that have a green hue in them. Let's take a look at the font section. These are fonts that are available from Google Fonts that can be downloaded and embedded in our document. So these are not fonts installed on my local system. We can just left click and drag these fonts over, but unlike the color palette, when we drag a font into our document, it also becomes embedded in our document. So it downloads the font from Google, embeds it in our document, and it also adds it to our Defs panel under the fonts section. So we now see this font is being used and it's defined in our document as well. We can also right click on a font in our library to see more information about it, and we can add it to our Defs panel by using this button as well. So this is the same as dragging and dropping it over, except that it's not displayed on our document currently, but it still is in our Defs panel. We can search for specific fonts using the search bar if there's a certain type of font we want to use. We can also sort these fonts by clicking in the bottom right-hand corner, and we can sort by alphabetical order, popularity, trending, the latest font added. We can also search certain categories such as serif fonts only and we can search subset, which is going to be language, so different language or symbol fonts that we want to use. So there's different search options using this button in the bottom right-hand corner. Moving on to images. These images are sourced from pixabay.com, and so are the vector graphics, and they're going to behave similarly. So we can just left-click and drag an image to bring it into our document. We can also search for certain uh, pictures. So we, we, if we want to find a house, we can search for house images and drag those images in. We also have search options here. We can search by quality, the orientation, whether it's horizontal or vertical. We can search by certain categories. If we only want to find food images, we'd probably erase this house, and then we just search for food images. So these categories can be really nice for finding a certain type of picture uh, in a category. And we can sort by the most popular images or the most recent or latest added images. And it's worth noting that when we drag and drop these in, it's not just linking the image, it's actually downloading it and embedding this image in our document. Same with the fonts. When we bring these over, they're getting embedded in the document. We can see what that looks like. So if we go File, Save, and we can just save this file on the desktop quickly. We can look at this document in the web browser, and we can right click and go View Page Source, and we can see these fonts that are embedded in the code, as well as the images that are, that are embedded and the licensing associated with them. The vector graphics import the same way as the images with the added benefit of being able to modify them further. So this is a group set of objects. If we left click quickly, we can get in and change different parts of this. So we have much more control uh, over editing this image and we can get in and manipulate each individual part of this vector graphic. Um, other than that, it's the same as an image, but we have much more control over the paths and the colors and the different objects in this drawing. I hope that's helped you see a little bit more about what's possible with the library and helped you see ways that you can integrate it and use it in your workflow when using Boxy SVG.